welcome in. Seven Rivers Racing here on KQEG TV. I'm Dan Dyker along with Al Losey coming off another. Uh, actually, the weather was actually hotter than anticipated at the lacrosse speedway. Probably the hottest day we've had, but vocal cords sound good, don't they? <laughs> yeah, they do. Uh, I announced four races in seven <laughs> days. Yeah, you did an awful lot there. I mean, the, the racing around here and the weather has been so cooperative. Well, I want to thank, first off, uh, this is the first show we've had since the uh, Tundra Super Late Model Series invaded the lacrosse right. speedway last Wednesday night, uh, brought out 33 cars, right. but you had an outstanding attendance. The place was darn near packed. And uh, Frank Cryer, of course, uh, went on to win the uh, Tundra Super Late Model Series. And uh, what a night to see some of the drivers that you don't normally see in the region. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of those guys only come back, guys and girls, when they come back here during Oktoberfest. Right. Uh, but there were some interesting things. One of the Deckers was running a backup of Cryers right. uh, after she did about 14,000 hours in damage at Jefferson, I think it was. Ouch, yes. And uh, there were some other drivers out that pretty much told me flat out in the pits, this was a testing tune for Oktoberfest. And weather-wise, I was going to ask you, since you've probably been at more fests than I have, when you go out to test and tune for Oktoberfest in the super late, it was a warm night Wednesday night. When you look at coming back, look at the, look at the fest we had last year, 20s right. and 30s. Obviously, right. that track was a solid rock. You know, we know some of the things that we're testing and tuning for, are testing and tuning for, but when it comes to the temperatures, doesn't that make quite a difference? Well, it makes a huge difference, that, and the uh, humidity makes a huge difference, and you make a great point there, Dan. Oktoberfest could be in the 20s or it could be in the 90s. You just Not don't since know. I've been here in South Bend. I've been waiting, believe <laughs> but, you me. Yeah, and uh, so they, they, if they can kind of get the, the car dialed in a little bit, plus this is a track that none of them race at. There's no other track similar to this in size and the scope of the uh, uh, corners because they are so different. So it does give them a little bit of an idea suspension-wise, but you're right, tires make a big difference. And uh, you're right, temperature makes a big difference. Talking about testing and tuning, Danny Gilster came out on Saturday night this past weekend in his new Mid-Am car. Didn't turn any laps with the sportsman that we right. thought maybe he was going to do. But uh, I talked to Jimmy Crackhorn Gilster afterwards, his brother, and he said, you know, he was there to test for the Milwaukee Mile this week. Actually found some things that they are really, he said, well, in his words, we're lucky we found now before we went to Milwaukee because he may have had some problems. Right, and lacrosse really is... Well, it's not the same size as Milwaukee, right. but it does give you a good idea because you're running bigger speeds, and the corners at Milwaukee, when you look at it from an aerial view, are wide sweeping corners, but the speeds that you're carrying into the corners really makes it a tight corner because of how the car is going to feel going in, and that's what turns one and two at lacrosse will give you. Of course, we taped the show before the Milwaukee Mile races. Right. They were on Tuesday night, uh, but check out my uh, Seven Rivers Racing Show on uh, Facebook or my uh, WKTY Facebook, and that would be the race report, and we'll have all the details of who the winning drivers were, and uh, hopefully we'll have some audio and video for you next week. Starting things off, Mississippi Thunder Speedway. Wow, what a night we had Friday night. Uh, had about 2,500 fans. I'm probably the largest crowd I've ever seen there since I've been working there. And they had the fifth annual River City Rumble, $3,500 to win a mod uh, feature. That went to uh, Brandon Davis out of Iowa. What a great race he had. Uh, Decor Iowa's Troy Hovey, uh, we didn't think he was going to pass Tech at the mm -hmm. end of the race night. So he was holding <laughs> on very, very closely to the, to the shed there. Yep. Found out he went through and passed Tech and ended up picking a $2,500 payday after uh, getting a last lap um, pass in turn four. What a two-car shootout we had at the dirt right. track. Uh, Gary Wersgala, the uh, 09, the super stock track champion, ended up picking a nice feature win on a Friday night. Uh, he picked it up on 12, uh, lap 12 of the 20 lap feature. Also, Doug White checking a roll again. He's trying to defend his track championship from last year. Uh, he had quite a race going on with the uh, former national and track champion Danny Hansen, and uh, he won in the uh, straight stocks. It's the top of the point standings even this year. Also, the uh, uh, Bob Szeski won the 600 modifieds, and we had a nice car count there as well. Do want to make mention for the folks uh, up in the Winona, Trumpelo County region, we had a really scary wreck uh, in the street stock Saturday night uh, in St. Jane Keating. One of the oldest drivers of the Speedway has told right. us many times, I'm out here to win. You know, her goal in life is to win maybe a heat race, but she's sure. been there for a long time. 30, 40 yeah. years. Um, and we don't know what happened with her car. Two of them got locked together on mm -hmm. the opening green flag lap. They're rumbling down the front straight away. All of a sudden, they hit the turn one wall head on. I mean, there was yeah. no brakes being involved there whatsoever. Uh, we did find out later in the program that she did uh, suffer some pretty severe mm -hmm. uh, back injuries. So uh, 
our condolences are going out to the entire family of Insane Jane and, and her son that races up there as well. And hopefully we get to the 86 back out there for the rest of the year. Also want to mention that the A Mini Modifieds went to Triple O's young Alex Stevens. B Mini Modifieds went to Osage, Iowa's uh, Joe Chisholm. Matter of fact, there were two Chisholm's, their father and son. I never mm -hmm. did look. Where is Osage, Iowa? Uh, I, I've heard of it, but I don't know exactly where it is. I'll have to look that up. Yeah. We also had, I, mean, I don't know if you remember this, we talked last year, one of our drivers that comes up for these big money events, say your Mississippi Thunder Speedway, you got a $10,000 to win BMOD Challenge coming up here in about a month. Uh, one of the drivers comes from Happy, Texas. So we made, <laughs> That's quite a haul. <laughs> we made mention last year it's a town of 300 people. So if you win $10,000, do you go back and just have a community picnic? It would be a happy picnic, that's for sure. <laughs> in happy Texas. Dan Bailey, another announcer of the dirt track, we were uh, looking it up last year and he came back and mm -hmm. said it was a town of 300 whopping that's people. Funny. Coming up this weekend, it's going to be a regular program, USRA Modifieds and B Modifieds. We've got the Wasota Super Stocks and the Street Stocks, the MTS Pure Stocks, and the A and B Mini Modifieds are going to be back as well. Check out uh, MississippiThunder.com. We gave away five large screen TVs, 500 bucks worth of kids' toys, two bikes, two scooters, uh, and then we had a, a Frisbee draw where we knew what the lineup was for the A feature and the mm -hmm. B feature for the, or for the uh, A feature for the Modifieds and B Modifieds. Threw the Frisbee on the crowd, and if your name, if that driver's winning name was in the back, we walked out with 200 bucks. So a couple Holy people cow. walked out with cash as well. Wow, that and sounds a like a fun night. 50 50. <laughs> that's, a, that's one heck, you know, the, the racetracks and the promoters around here do such an excellent job to make the fans feel a part of the events going on at each racetrack every, every race night. Well, we That we was were, a big night, though. We were doing it there. We were giving away. I'm surprised we just didn't give away the kitchen sink. I yeah. think we might have given some parts away to it. But what a night we had there at MississippiThunder.com. When we return, we're going to give our weekly recap of the Cross Speedway. One of the drivers that was not in attendance on Saturday night. Well, his class didn't run, but they'll be back at it this weekend. It is going to be introduced here in just a couple of moments. This is Semilvers Racing on KQEG TV. When you're all out of good ideas and you've moved on to the dumb ones, it's time. American Standard Heating and Air Conditioning, a higher standard of comfort. Hmm. May I take your order? Be not defeated by indecision. Choose the path that leads to a better day. Choose the way of the meal. Make it a meal with one of Cousin Sub's new pork subs, the Memphis Steak, or the Cubano for a limited time only. The key to happiness is sharing. Oh. Cousin Sub's. Better bread, better subs, better day. Did you know that the Holman American Legion is open to the public? That's right, seven days a week you can enjoy the full service bar while watching your favorite sports team or NASCAR driver. You don't need to be a member to enjoy the Holman American Legion's rotating lunch special every Tuesday for only $6. A banquet hall with seating up to 250 people is also available for weddings, birthdays, or any other special event. See you at the Holman American Legion, 419 First Avenue West in Holman. Get ready for the thunder. The Mississippi Thunder Speedway. Your Friday night racing destination. Racing starts at 7. Super stocks. Modified. 600 mods. Pure stocks. Street stocks. Viva. It's racing excitement dirt track style. Tickets $12 for adults. $5 18 and under. $8 for students. Or our family pack. $25 for two adults and three kids 18 and under. Friday night racing starts at 7. Bring on the thunder. Dirt track style at the Mississippi Thunder Speedway. Highway 35 just north of Fountain City. Racing KQEG TV and Dan Dyke along with Al Losey had a surprise visitor at the Lacrosse Speed with us past week, and I really wish one of these two vehicles would have been pushing some laps <laughs> at the speedway. As you look down yeah. from the tower right there, I looked around and saw a big blaze of yellow. And uh, first <laughs> off, you've got the Paul Menards 2011 Indy Brickyard winning car. And alongside that is the number 88 of Matt Crafton. He is the current Camping World Truck Series point leader. Matter of fact, you talk about consistency. Past uh, nine years, he has uh, been uh, top 10 
eight of the last nine years in the points, and that was kind of cool. Those were totally set up. I mean, it, it looked as though someone could have hopped in mm -hmm. uh, and actually drove one of those cars on the track. Yeah, I'm wondering if they were bringing them around or maybe taking them up to the Menards uh, headquarters up in Eau Claire and decided to just stop on in and uh, put them out here because the driver of the truck may have wanted some free tickets to lacrosse. But that That's is nice really, train. yeah, that is really <laughs> sharp having those cars. Uh, yeah, you can tell the difference between a show car, which is what you mostly see when you right. see cars at a shopping mall or something like this. But yeah, these were definitely the real deal. Well, that was cool to have them in there. And I didn't realize Matt Crafton is a current point leader when it comes to the uh, Camping World Truck Series after winning, I think it was Kentucky was the last race that they had here just a couple weeks ago. Yep. So we'll go from those to the late models at the Lacrosse Speedway. A uh, nice car count out there and some great racing on a Saturday night, especially for Brad Paul. You and I have talked about what it takes to get clean air, what the definition is. Right. Brad Paul had such a big lead that uh, you could have cut the clean air in half and he still would have <laughs> won this thing. So the second place car had some clean air too. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, his brother Ryan does such a great job of setting his car up and a lot of the other cars especially in the sportsman division and Ryan is probably up there uh, as one of the top uh, uh, crew members setting a car up and Brad just knows how to drive the car now I know that they did some issues things with their tires after the first practice and talked about it during the week and that made that car so darn fast well you see him cruise off into victory lane right there getting the checkered flags in the last lap uh, Steve Carlson took second, Cole Howell in third, Jay Herbs fourth, Mike Carlson rounded out the top five. And we're going to run down the points here in a moment for you. It's a little bit closer than you would actually think it is. Bonus points were given out for the late model drivers that were there. Uh, we also had a top dog race. It was Adam Degenhardt. We took the fat, we, we took the top three from Quala from the six for six dash right. and the top three from the first heat and then ran them in the top dog race. So Adam Degenhardt won that. Uh, Brandon Berg and Steve Carlson won heat races. Jay Herbst won the six for six. Brad Powell fastest, 20.009, and about uh, a cool 98 mile per hour on the 5 eighths oval. To the sportsman we go, and this was a great battle right here. Some of your big horsepower cars were stuck in about, uh, you see how close this was here. Jake Ernestson, of course, your point leader is the 37. Took him about half the race to actually get where he was right there. Uh, but the night belonged to Greg Sheck. Once he went to the outside, uh, something he very rarely does, he got past Brian Hesselberg, used a late caution to do that. And uh, Greg Sheck, another victory. That's number two in the year. Yeah, Greg has is, is been out there for so darn long that once he gets out in front, and especially if the two guards, cars behind him are running side by side, I am kind of surprised Billy Martin didn't move up a little bit because he usually runs that outside well, pretty decent. he was almost leading that race for a while. Mm -hmm. And then uh, he had told me something in the pits afterwards. I can't remember. He had a problem with something mm -hmm. that made him slip back. And I remember between turns three and four, he had a problem. So he lost about three or four spots. Uh, Greg Sheck uh, takes the race. Brian Hesselberg second. Steve Bachman third. Bill Martin did finish fourth. You were logging round out the top five. Jamie Dummer won the rat dash race. It's two checkered flag wins in a row for him now in weeks to weeks. And Mark Chalet took the uh, heat race. Thunder stocks and a lot of bumping and banging going on here. Again, it was a more in victory lane, but this time it wasn't Adam. They had to dig him out of the mud in the infield. And the winner to this race went to Brother Andy. Yeah, they, they, they're just so good in this division. Uh, <laughs> they, they like to dominate this division. The number of cars just, we need to do something to get some more cars out there. We'd well, like to really see that. And again, you're going to watch, uh, Adam actually had to start in the back when they pulled his car out. He did finish, uh, he did what was two laps down. Uh, but the way it was looking, how he was running, he was really chopping at the bit to get back up front there. Uh, Jordan Meyer second, Josh Engler third, Brad Worth in fourth, Jesse Vian that rounded up the top five. J.R. Turlett almost went for the trifecta. He got the uh, dash and the heat race win. Andy Moore won the other heat race. American Super Cup cars are back out. You usually get about 10 to 15 of them back out there. The, the half-scale sprint car, uh, sprint cup type cars. And this video makes them look a lot larger than they actually <laughs> are. Uh, yep. You can really kind of see it as they head in the corners. Uh, Ken Jones won the race. Earl Hoth second. Brian Baldaga, the point leader, third. Mick Ellis, fourth. And Greg Davis won the top five. Earl Hop was your fast time car. Believe it or not, I can get into one of those. One of their drivers is 6'9". Yeah, I was just thinking that it, it probably comes up to your ankle. The, these things look almost, they're probably closer to the size of a, of a remote control car than they are to a race car. Full roll cage, <laughs> full suspension. They can top out at 100 yeah. mile per hour on, the, uh, on, on some of the bigger tracks. It really so glad, to, glad to have them back again. They <laughs> took a lot of pictures with drivers in the pits. Looking at the points, 
Steve Carlson has a 72-point lead over Jay Herbst. Cole Howland is actually 102 back. Couple of bad nights for Steve, and Cole could find himself battling Jay for a track yeah. championship. Uh, Grand National Sportsman uh, Greg Sheck and Steve Bachman came into the night last week tied for second. Now Greg Sheck is eaten into Jay Carnison's lead. He's down by 25, 41 back for Steve Bachman. Thunderstocks, you're going to see this go all wow. the way to Oktoberfest. Adam Moore leads two points back as Jason Bolster and Jordan Myers. Hornets, Jake Bemis has a five-point lead over Kim Strom, six over Jeff Thompson, nine over Jeff Stumlin, and ten over Kevin Turner. That's going to go down to Oktoberfest as well. Jared Logging yep. has a three-point lead over Tom Lethe, and the Outlaws nine points better than Cole Schulze. And uh, coming up at Lacrosse Speedway this weekend, late model sportsman Thunderstocks, the Hornets are back, figure eight races back, and pre-race kids rides. Are Another big novelty event at the Lacrosse Speedway this weekend was the Thunderstock Tag Team event. You're gonna, I'm glad that we have videos on the front straight in turn two yep. because you'll be able to see why, right? There was one of them. Uh, your eventual winner team was kind of knocked out because, well, they didn't tag each other. Oh boy, uh, this looks like just so much fun. I, I really wish I was out there uh, Saturday night to watch this. This in itself looks like an incredibly fun novelty event. Well, you start off with one lap, you got to go up and turn one, tag your teammate, you got to hit him in the bumper, <laughs> make physical contact, Adam and Andy Moore. <laughs> Not the ghost tap, which you're going to see here in a moment. And that happened twice in a row. And they did run a nice race. They've got two of the strongest cars out there. Where's the tap? No, just oh. missed it there. The crowd knew it, and I knew it. <laughs> Track knew it. So they got uh, they got knocked out, and the winners were Josh England and his teammate Mark Chalet. But this is a really cool race. I like to see this. You know, obviously you don't want to mess up a late model, but no. uh, I'd sure like to see the late models try that. Too bad there wasn't some kind of a baton that could be passed like they do in track and field and, and do that. But that would be kind of fun to see a, a, that kind of speed going on out there. Well, that ties the novelty points. You can check those out at lacrossespeedway.com. And again, that was a really cool a novelty race we had right there and believe it or not you see how bright it was at the racetrack the sun yeah. was still out we could have probably got out of there if you uh, erase maybe a couple of the minor cautions we could have been out there by almost 9 30. wow for, uh, saturday night that program was just running and running and running chuck's doing a nice job of really getting Very them nice. in and keeping the action on the track this year one of the drivers that wasn't there that's going to be pulling double duty this weekend as we bring out the hornets and the figure eight race which has really gotten cool yes number three is coming up we're going to bring them on the next segment that will be the number 90 coming out of toma and that would be matt moore and uh, first question we're going to ask him is that paint job where did it come from because i think it's kind of cool we'll be right back with more in seven rivers racing did you know that the Holman American Legion is open to the public? That's right, seven days a week you can enjoy the full service bar while watching your favorite sports team or NASCAR driver. You don't need to be a member to enjoy the Holman American Legion's rotating lunch special every Tuesday for only $6. A banquet hall with seating up to 250 people is also available for weddings, birthdays, or any other special event. See you at the Holman American Legion, 419 First Avenue West in Holman. Get ready for the thunder. The Mississippi Thunder Speedway. Your Friday night racing destination. Racing starts at 7. Super stocks. Modified. 600 mods. Pure stocks. Street stocks. Viva. It's racing excitement dirt track style. Tickets $12 for adults. $5, 18 and under. $8 for students. Or our family pack. $25 for two adults and three kids, 18 and under. Friday night racing starts at 7. Bring on the thunder. Dirt track style at the Mississippi Thunder Speedway. Highway 35, just north of Fountain City. May I take your order? Be not defeated by indecision. Choose the path that leads to a better day. Choose the way of the meal. Make it a meal with one of Cousin Sub's new pork subs, the Memphis Steak, or the Cubano for a limited time only. The key to happiness is sharing. Oh. Cousin Sub's. Better bread, better subs, better day. We're back, Seven Rivers Racing, KQEG TV again. We need to put it together, a, a reel of what goes on when we're not on the camera right here, because that can be very interesting. I was waiting for our guest to make some tune of sounds there in the background. Uh, Matt Moore joins us. He's on a Toma, drives the number 90, has for quite some time with the Lacrosse Hornets, and every now and then jumps in the uh, novelty category. As a matter of fact, this year, Matt's running in three different categories. Currently running 21st in points in Hornets, but we're going to explain why he is lower than pretty much normal this year. Mm -hmm. 
six in figure eight points. Matt actually has a, a chance to win that figure eight championship, and he's also running 19th in novelty. Good to have you finally on the program. Hey, Thank Matt. you. Nice to be with you guys. First off, I've had a lot of people ask me, where did that paint scheme come? You went from the nine, from the red blazing candy apple look last year to this orange diamond plate thing, which I don't think is a bad thing. I like it. Where did yeah. it come from? That actually came, came by mistake. I went down to United Auto Parts and was looking for paint for the car, and he told me, look at the shelf in the back. Anything there is free. Mm. So I grabbed, nice. uh, grabbed a gallon of orange, and a, or a gallon of gray and a quart of orange and put it together, and I thought it turned out okay. I think I don't know how yeah. much you paid attention to it because oh, you yeah, guys we are at the opposite end. No, but we love watching else, the races, yeah. He, it's an interesting, <laughs> you know, and I, I like interesting, like right. you guys this year. Right. I mean, I told you flat out a couple years ago, I didn't like your paint scheme. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't change it because of me, but you guys have a very slick, <laughs> yeah. smooth cool. looking scheme when you come out of four. He's got the same thing on the action track quarter mile that you notice what it is coming out of four. And you also have a car that's unlike other Hornet cars at the Speedway. Yeah, it's a 2002 Ford Focus. Um, there's only one out there. I'm surprised there hasn't been a couple of copies out there. Usually that happens when one guy's fast. Yeah. So, I, I mean, usually, if I should have actually done my homework here and, and see how many Hondas are in the Hornets. Because I would say be it's got to be at least three quarters, yeah. if not maybe a tad bit less. How do you choose what you want to run? I'm just a diehard Ford person. Mm -hmm. So it's always got to be a Ford. I'm not going to drive it in the Hornet division. Do you, do you think the probes are starting to make an inroads there? Uh, yeah, the probes are pretty good at cars. I had I had one of them a few years ago, and of course, Bornitz, he's always always pretty fast. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I always say if if it's a Bornitz, he's in a probe. <laughs> yeah. he, he even has a sticker that says something you just got probed or something like that in yeah. the back of his cars this year. And um, Cole Schulze has a uh, a probe out there this year, but it's more of a ladder ladder model than mm -hmm. what the Bornitz is drive. So do you do you find that? Maybe if the fusion thing catch, catches on, people find them in the junkyards. What would, what would be the difference between that and, and the all popular Honda Civics? I don't know. They're just basically you just got to find a twin cam and a car that's got a good second gear and you usually do okay. I mean, what? There should be lots of focuses out there because they're pretty popular. Mm -hmm. I mean, you'd think they'd be pretty easy to find. Now, you started the year out 21st in points, and then people watch this and go, wow, Matt Moore is 21st in points. But it's, it's not what it looks like on paper. No, not at all. And on the on the first night, I piled her up in the heat race and didn't get to race the feature. Second night, I put it back together, came out, and I blew my engine in the heat race. So I missed that feature too. Mm -hmm. So, so how many features have you made this year? I've only made two, and I've won <laughs> both of them. Which is awfully odd because usually, yeah. I mean, everybody in the area knows that there are certain names that are synonymous with the Hornet class. I mean, if you look at the Thunderstocks, it's the Moors. If you look at the late models, it would be the Noodlemans and the Carlsons, right. you know. I mean, Sportsman's all up in the air this year. Yeah, or the Gilsters, you Gilsters, think Gilsters, the yes. Bolsters, yeah. the Shermerhorns, you know, yeah. not to knock anybody else. Right. But, oh, definitely. You know, Moore is one of those that, uh, along with the Kim Stroms and the Kevin Turners of, of the Hornet class. You know, we were talking about the, the point standing here. Does it surprise you? that there are five drivers within 10 points of each other that'll probably stay like this till Oktoberfest? No, that's the way Hornets usually are. Every year I remember, except for last year, it was pretty tight and pretty close and came down to the last night. The track so. does a good job, though, too, of in the rules of mixing it up to give everybody a chance to be up front. Uh, they have, what, an inversion, uh, point inversion or something? Yep, Why don't they, you explain that? They line you up by points. You know, the, the point leaders are in the, the second feature, which is a faster feature, and then right. you know, the guys that are further down are in the first feature, and they separate us all in heat races. Then if you win a feature the next week, you start dead last, and same thing as a heat race, so they do, do really good at breaking them up. Which Kim Strom found out here a couple of weeks ago. Last time you guys were out, as a matter of fact, Kim Strom had to start last in the feature. Actually was battling for second and then uh, had some problems. So it just shows if you've got a car and you've got, say, 22, 24 is what we average in a feature out there on, right. on a quarter mile track. And that's a lot of bobbing and weaving going on. Sure but uh, uh, Kim showed it. If you look at some of the names that are in the top five, Jake Bemis has only been at that track for a year and a half. And, of course, I know that his dad used to race, and he's been at that track, he told me, since he was like four or five years old. Okay. But if you look at some of the, the veteran Hornet drivers compared to some of the younger drivers, the Taylor Dobbs and the Logan Dinashes, it, 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 as you've been out there as long as you have, you've got to kind of like some of the new names that come in and actually kind of jumble up the point standings in the top five or ten. 
Yeah, definitely. And I know, you know, all those new guys, I've, I gave a few of those guys pointers as, you know, what to do because you help them out, they get going faster, they're out of your way, it makes for better racing. Yep, until they get to your bumper. Then you don't right. tell them anything. <laughs> then it's a whole different story. <laughs> yeah, and very it's true. just uh, competitor on competitor. <laughs> now, you know, there are uh, several drivers out there. I'd said the John Petrowski's, the Larry Hollett's. Um, uh, Kyle Swenson's mom, since she's one that pretty much does everything for their car, that are the veterans, including yourself on the track. Do you find that there are the younger drivers that may come up and after they've gotten to know you a little bit, we'll ask you, because I guess tire pressure is the biggest things that if you don't have those right on the action track quarter mile, you're not going to win a race. And, and that's why I mentioned Kyle Swenson's mom. She's a queen at it. Right. Yeah, tire pressure is definitely a big deal in a Hornet car. I mean, even when it's hot or colder, you got to change them so your car drives right. But yeah, a lot of the new guys come up, they do come up and start asking for help, and you always just give them a helping hand when you can, and always lead them in the right direction. You don't get them all the way there, you just get them close. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and again, you know, there are some secrets you keep in your back yep. pocket. Always, definitely. So for the folks that have not been out or actually gotten into see what a Hornet is like, this isn't just a, a class where someone paid 200 bucks to dig one out of a junkyard, put some tires on it, ripped out the inside. You know, number one, I love the wrap jobs, and, and like, like yours, uh, Nate Towners, you guys are paying so much attention to these race cars, and that's why when I announce, I make it sound like the late models, because you guys are a part of that show. When you look at the insides, though, there's a lot more paid attention to than most people would think. Yeah, you gotta have, gotta have a decent roll cage. Safe, safety's always number one. You know, I, for one, last year had a car on my roof, so a good roll oh, cage that. is always nice for you. That saved me a lot, but yeah, there's a lot of work that goes into them. They're not just the junkyard bombers anymore. And I think it's, I mean, every year since I've been there, we were averaging between 50, 60, 70 cars. Right. And again, I wasn't kidding. We get 22, 25 car features out right. there. And, right. and it makes them for exciting racing, especially if you have to start in the back. Now, I know uh, you're kind of self-sponsored. Uh, you've got a great dealership going on in Toma. Talk about your sponsors for this year. All righty, well, morephilosauto.com, obviously. Um, then there's Shaw's Auto Auto Warrens, Service Plus Heating and Clean in Sparta, the Bank Bar in Toma, and I forgot him on the radio, the Harmony Club in Sparta. Nope, gotta you mention gotta remember that. that. You know Dave crawling yeah. up the backside of you. Hey, real <laughs> you quickly. You know where that is. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm DJ there. Hey, real quickly, uh, you got your third figure eight race coming up here. Real quickly, talk about the figure eights. It, it, how much of a bonus is this for the racetrack? Oh, uh, it's definitely, it should be fun to watch because it's definitely as fun to do, that's for sure. It's something totally different than I've ever done before. And you're, you're six in points, and I think you're only 11th out of first place. I mean, this thing's going to come down to the very last night. Yeah, hopefully hopefully the car stays together. It's pretty tough after it's two races. Mm -hmm. Pretty pretty beat up, so we're to see if it lasts the rest of the year. And of course, Matt's one of those that uses his one car in that class. Some drivers have the backups. Uh, I know uh, uh, John from Johns Bay and then Troy Tuma, they've got a collection of them sitting out there. So. Right. Going to be interesting to see uh, what happens in the figure eight race. Again, lacrossespeedway.com for this weekend's schedule. MississippiThunder.com to find out what's going on up at the dirt track. That's on Friday night. Moreforlessauto.com. Make sure you check out Matt because I know a lot of monies he makes off the selling cars goes right, right. back into his race team, which is really, really wow. cool to do. When's Al coming back? This week. All right, the Advocare. Walk up to him and just, if you don't even know who he is, just go, hey, Stig. Just yeah. see what he does. <laughs> He's starting to respond. Yeah, yeah, yeah he is. It's on the call. You need to get the stick in here, too. Yeah. We haven't had him in yet this year. No, not for a couple, couple years, but his schedule is pretty tough. All right, we'll, we'll have, have to work it. Get the stick in here in the next couple of weeks. Also, make sure you stop by Festival Food this week. Two for one buddy coupons. You can get them at home and on Alaska Lacrosse. Yep. Two for one admissions. Always good things. You got more money to eat with. On behalf of Matt Moore, coming at a total of the number 90 Hornets, and Al Osium Dan Dr. Thanks for joining us. Check out the YouTube channel, similar as racing. Uh, we're putting the whole shows up there this year, and there's a whole lot to view. We'll be back next week. Thanks for stopping by Seven Rivers Racing.